Welcome back to JDM Legends presented by Turn 14 Distribution. I've got my delicate white gloves on, which can only mean one thing, so stay tuned to find out why. And here is the reason for the gloves. Titanium goodness from Tomei. There is a lot of titanium going on here. There's a lot of pie cuts. There's a lot of amazingness. I will start off with this, which I think is one of the cooler pieces. Uh, this is the Tomei Titanium Extreme uh, front pipe. And as you can see, it is an absolute work of art. Uh, these, the diameter here is quite large. This is 76 mil opening up all the way to full three inch up uh, here. The, the beauty of this thing is that it is a slip fit together. So installation is gonna be so much easier. They actually even include, you can see this front piece here. We'll be able to bolt on and then slide this on and you can make adjustments here to get it just right. Which I think with this type of pipe, is a little bit tricky to install. Like I can't imagine trying to put this in as one unit. And for the exhaust system, this is same thing, their Extreme tie, which is three and a half inches. So we are going bigger than three inch. We'll see, I think it's gonna make a bunch of power, but look at the welds on this, man. Yeah, they're beautiful. They're just like beautifully, ro I think they're robotically welded. They have to be, even the way the hangers are done. Like look, they've been reinforced here. Tight. The, the downside to titanium, is that you know it is quite hard and brittle so it can tend to crack especially on cars with with a lot of vibration and stuff so they have you know taken the time to reinforce areas like this where you would see that type of cracking so i'm i've always been impressed with the tomei products like the stuff is always so high quality and of course the weight savings is huge for the exhaust system we are looking at almost 25 pounds and for the front pipe it's six pounds so that is a significant amount of weight we're going to drop we had a quick look at the instructions and it does say to put this piece together here and bolt this up first loosely of course i think we're going to tighten everything afterwards but wow remarkably just with an extension you can get to the front pipe i was a little bit worried that it would be pretty difficult to get to this but uh, both sides here are pretty easy to get at, so that, that's really, really nice. Tomei also includes the bolt smooth paste, which ensures that your bolts, or your nuts in this situation, because these are studs here, aren't going to seize up. Oh, okay, come on. I was hoping this would just stay on here, but the gravity is, oh, there we go. Quick, let's get the pipe. Let's see here. Whoa. This is the maze, the maze of piping. Oh yeah, look at that though. Man, that does look pretty cool. That is pretty neat. And I, I dropped one nut, that. don't worry, I got two. I knew that was gonna happen. That nut smooth paste caught you. Yeah, it did, it certainly did. All right guys, for those of you that have done a uh, one piece down pipe, post in the comments if it's easy or it's been difficult. As you can see this here, Man, that is about as easy I, as it can get with these kind of being separated. I do have these two clamps that I need to tighten up on here, which I don't think I'm going to touch any of this until we get the rest of the exhaust system. I'll just like snug it up just a little bit just to get into place and we can bolt everything else on.
Much like I've come to expect from Tomei, the fit up on this was superb. Everything clears just nicely and I think it is going to sound amazing. That's another thing that uh, it, it is a unique characteristic of titanium, especially with what I think are, are almost like equal length uh, pipes, the, the front pipes here. This thing is gonna sound awesome. Uh, once we get this car started, which won't be just yet, and the last thing I need to do is put our wideband O2 sensor in here from Link, and then I'll run this up to that plug, which will officially deem anything wiring related, I think, done, DP. Yeah, that's an exciting day, man. Yes, yes. And then what we're gonna move on to next is, I think we need to bleed the Atessa system. In order to bleed this Atessa system, the first thing we had to do was fill, overfill this uh, tank here. Um, and what you'll notice, I don't know if you guys can see this or not, but there's a big air gap. If I pull this out here, there's a big air gap right there that is quite large. And we need to get that down to five mil. And that means having to trigger the Atessa pump. And thankfully on the R34, there's just a connector, a plug that you disconnect, which will now trigger the unit. And then we gotta go underneath and bleed it. So Dave is up inside the car. We have that connector, they call it a bleed connector, uh, right now unplugged. So theoretically, if he keys on, that should trigger the pump and we should see some fluid come out of here. It sucks, cause I can't, get my vacuum line, my tube here, to stay on the bleed. And I have to hold it, which is not great, but we'll see how this works. All right, uh, cycle it on. Oh yeah, okay, turn it off. Yeah, wow, that worked really well. There was a ton of air that it pumped through. Oh yeah, that's, that's really working it. That's really working it. Okay, turn it off. Oh, we got more air coming. So we're just gonna do this a, a, a bunch more times and you can see it did fill this pretty quickly with old oil until all the air is out of the system. So the final procedure on this bleed is to have that connector and like unplug it and plug it in and out, in and out, in and out until you get the air pocket that's in here down to five mil. And as you can see, we did get ours down a bit, but it's just not getting to that five mil. And we've been giving her for like 30 minutes here trying to get that thing to move. So at this point, we're just gonna leave it, um, come back to it. If you guys have any suggestions or maybe it's supposed to stay at that. I don't know if that's like an R34 manual that I'm reading. Uh, that five mil gap, maybe it's different on the 34. So if you guys have any suggestions, certainly post in the comments. Next on the list here is a job that I've been also avoiding, wiring and doing the fuel pump. The two things I did not really wanna tell myself that I'm gonna to have to do on this car, but uh, the fuel pump is a necessity to do. Unfortunately, it is a pain in the butt to get to. It is buried underneath uh, all of this here. And I, I watched Adam LZ struggle with it because he did it on his 34. And I think we're gonna have the, the same problem here. But DP, check out the, the, on, on a plus side, look at the clips that are being used. Plus side this is, is a plus, <laughs> there's a plus here. And I'm just really blown away by the, the clips uh, uh, right here. Look, it's just a simple screw. It locks in place and it screws out with a, with a Phillips. Why don't they make more of these? Every time we, we're dealing with these types of clips, they're always like the pry ones and you gotta get underneath and you always like mar them. But yeah, that is a those, design, those were kind of nice. You know what's and not a great design though? I know, I know, look at, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty positive oh, this God. whole shell, this, all of this has to come out and we have to take the rear seat out. What, that, that huge steel brace has to come out? This whole thing, man, this massive. whole brace, this whole brace has to come out, yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Did but I you, uh, tell you about that time we changed the fuel pump in the Super? I know, I know. Oh my God! We did that in like five like minutes. Right here, you just went boop. <laughs> in the trunk. You, you just closed your eyes, you, yeah. and it was open. Boop, done. Well, you know what? I, looking at this, um, the battery. We were gonna change the battery yeah, out. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't think you could take the battery out here without, or maybe you could. Oh, possibly no. like no way. You'd have to take that brace out. I think you have to take God, all of this out, anyways. Insane. So. Oh. 
<laughs> Look at this, DP. It's a beast. Look at this. This is what I call chassis stiffening. Wow. Holy smokes. Yeah. That. And they were like, no, no, this is still not enough. We're going to put in a strut tower brace here just for good measure, you know? Wow. I admire Nissan for that. But look, we do have access to everything. So that wasn't all that bad. No, it was just a was bunch of terrible. bolts. You know, we were complaining terrible. a little bit too much. I do think like this has to come out. Brace too, PT. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, let me let me put some light on it and show you guys. Like, look at that brace. Yeah. That is beefy. That is beefy. They're they're being legit serious. All right, check this battery out. How rad is this, DP? GTR R34. Yeah. Specific. Specific. What is your super? You you had like this huge battery, like a lug, probably generic. It I could have gone to AutoZone. Yeah. No, with this of an exotic of a vehicle, you need your own battery. Pretty cool little battery made by the Fukuwara battery. That's battery. right. And yet another structural brace here. Look at that, people. Woo. That thing also needs to come out. Last step here now is with everything unbolted to unplug. <laughs> all these connectors and they certainly are not easy oh, i'm gonna ruin my fingers yeah this one. dig in there buddy dig in there <sighs> come on now come on this is all audio stuff back here no this is this is the best of the best look yaw rate sensor ooh, dp ooh, fancy. i don't even think the supra knew what a yaw rate sensor ooh, was when it was it. designed you know what detects yaw rate in the supra the driver, oh, the wow. more skilled driver. He doesn't need electronics to compensate for his lack of skills. He just drives it like a boss. Well, that's why those things uh, never ran any real track events or series, <laughs> right? Oh. All right, there's the a wire that it was stuck on. Look at this oh, nonsense. Okay. What is this? This is, this is the epitome of Japanese tech. Oh, Look at this God. computer on top of computer. On top of computer, all controlling 10 different things and having a yaw rate sensor. Oh I don't even know what this is. But uh, th there's technology in here, people, believe me. Look at this. Are these uh, like little RCA plugs on the amp? Yeah, tiny. Red, yeah. green. So pro. I know, wow. I will say there's a lot of... Uh, oh, like man high quality componentry on this car. Like the battery terminals had these little rubber covers on them. Yeah, yeah. Everything like, feels kind of premium on this car where- It, it, it does, honestly, it just feels very super car-y. Like, it does, yeah. The Japanese were certainly after a, a, a certain client and um, you know, I think they, they built that car, this car to, to be exactly that. And I think that's where, you know, it's this thing's- like a demo of all of Nissan's yeah, yeah, capabilities. Yeah. Where, the Supra was just, you know, a 2J. The everyman's car where this was the uh, the distinguished Japanese gentleman <laughs> that wanted super power, but all wheel drive and technology. But uh, anyways, that is all of it guys. And uh, it's just a mess of wires. So now it is time we dig into the fuel pump. We are now at the point where we need to remove the fuel tank ring seal. And in the past, what we have done is take a hammer and like smash the corner of it until it starts moving and you end up destroying that ring seal. So of course, uh, hot off the Amazon van truck is this from Lyle. And we seem to be purchasing everything from Lyle these days. <laughs> we do. And uh, they just seem to have all of these like specialty tools, which are pretty awesome. And this one is no different. It's gonna just drop on the top of it. And then we can rotate it without, you know, having to like fight. Or, or fret or damage that ring, which, you know, in I think about 90% of the, the cases, if you're just using a hammer and a blunt object, that's what happens. And you can see with this guy, it's gonna sit on there and then you can adjust the size here. Anyways, we'll show you how it works. Okay, let's see how this thing works. Oh, wow. Look at that. that easy, oh, it's eh? so easy, man. I've been impressed by Lyle's quality too. Like yes, yeah. The seal pullers that we use, for the crank pulley seal. Like it's this little lip and yet it's super strong. So it seems like they engineer their tools very well. Yeah, and that's why I keep buying their stuff because it, it do, just does seem like they put a bunch more quality into it where, you know, Amazon is a crapshoot with everything. It you is. just don't know 
what's going to be good and there's a bunch of these out there on the market that were you know like 20 bucks but you know i, I just don't know the quality where i know that these guys actually test their 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 parts and make sure everything's high quality and that it's not going to like fail out on you so there it is um and i don't know how much of this you guys can see but there's like oh i see the pumps down in there it's in a hanger and this is like a two-piece system ah wonderful man and then i don't know how to is that pump you gotta go in you gotta go in with your hand here nice does the pump just come out of the the housing here. <laughs> oh, you gotta pull the pump out of the housing? All right, so I've, I've slid the housing off here, and I think, ah, uh, you'll see it comes off on this with this metal bracket. Oh, oh, this thing. Oh man, we're dripping gas everywhere, but look at this. Yeah, wow. It's like the, uh, the boa constrictor of, <laughs> A fuel pump setup. Yeah, it's let's, strange. Let's, eh? let's pull this out here. Oh, yeah. look, look at that! Wow, this is kind of a first for me. I've never seen a pump held in with these weird clips. You can see. Oh, an example of Nissan over engine. I know. Well, look at look at this though. thing, and then it's like they were trying to flex on every <laughs> like, part of this car. <laughs> look at the, there's this this cage almost. Like, how does this? Exit out of here now. You gotta like twist it. There's a, a damper built in here too. Holy smokes, all right. So I probably went the wrong way there. That should have gone down. Um, this is a first for me though. You see, so this is a damper. This one here is even more trippy. Yeah. I guess this is a, another damper of sorts, but like it just has an opening on this side and an opening on that side. So if, if you GTR experts know what these are, certainly post in the comments as to why they have those holes there. Yeah, I'm curious um, too. So I think really our make it or break it deal here is whether we can transfer this hose onto this pump. The rest of this we can figure out and how to, to get to work, but this here is really the only issue because we normally, um, all of these pumps do come with a filter that's mounted like right here and this one having this extension is going to really you know make it a little bit more difficult and it looks like we have ourselves a winner here the AM 340 liter per hour fuel pump which is a, the pump that we've always used E85 compatible all the good stuff gonna flow more th than we need it for our power level does fit up to the stock fitting here for the filter. So this is gonna be a huge thing. So I was well on my way in terms of figuring out how to install this into here. However, I just realized that we have an issue and that is our AEM fuel pump isn't gonna work, not because it doesn't flow enough or not because it's not gonna fit in here perfectly. That is because it is not a two-stage fuel pump like the OEM one. I came across a couple of threads that mentioned there is a fuel pump control module in the R34 stock. I think what we're gonna have to do is pause this for a second. I'm gonna do a bit of research. I know like there is a drop in Nismo one for $1,600, which just seems insane. I'm definitely not going down that route. I do have a little uh, trick up my sleeve, which may involve another Nissan product that may fit up here and work exceptionally well too. So I just need to do a little bit more research on it. In the meantime, if you guys have any advice as to what pump I can use on here that will bolt in stock, I don't wanna have to like bypass the control module. We're trying to make sure that everything just like fits up. I'm not gonna be, you know, cutting holes in the housing or anything, post in the comments. All right, guys, I think we are going to have to wrap this one. I did actually speak to Radek from RS Tuning, my local GTR expert, and he did confirm for me that in fact, we can use the OEM Z32 twin turbo fuel pump as a direct bolt-in into the GTR uh, assembly. And the beauty of that pump is it flows almost around 255 liters per hour, so that is uh, well into the 600 wheel horsepower range. So that is gonna work very, very well for us. And that means we're not going to have to do a bunch of mm, hacking up as a, you guys just saw with the AAM to try to get that thing to work. And honestly, it wouldn't be a lot of, a, a lot of effort. There is a, a 
that controller can be bypassed. You can figure out how to run, just run, uh, I think like a, a dedicated power and then a ground to the chassis and that pump will work at that one speed and flow well. But I, like I said, I just don't want to hack anything up on this car. So the, the Z32 pump looks like it is going to be the ticket. However, uh, I can't find one locally. It's back ordered uh, in Canada. So I am looking into the US. Hopefully one of the shops down there like Z1 or Real Street or somebody has one in stock that I can get up here quickly. So we will be installing that in the next episode. We certainly do appreciate you guys watching. If you're hungry for more Speed Academy content, we just did revamp our Patreon and we do have a podcast, our very first podcast that we did on there for members only. So be sure to check that one out too.